All right, now we're going to talk about perfect competition in the long run. Now, what I want to do here is I want to review first a few things that we said about the long run in a previous lesson. Uh, we mentioned that in the short run, uh, profits can endure for a while, but we said that in the long run, profits do not last. And we'll explain why in just a few minutes. Uh, we also said previously that in the short run, uh, a business can tolerate losses for a little while, but in the long run, losses are not tolerated. See, if we're experiencing losses in the, um, in the short run, we can't do anything about the losses other than try and recover some of our fixed costs or shut down temporarily until uh, there's a change in, co in marginal cost or there's a change in the price. But in the long run, because we don't have any fixed costs, let me remind you, there are no fixed costs in the long run. Because there are no fixed costs, there are no fixed costs to recover. And therefore, um, we only have, we're only dealing in total costs and we're only dealing in uh, total revenue. And therefore, we're not going to be okay with keeping losses. If we're getting ready to invest in some fixed costs in an industry and we're already losing money with just variable costs, then adding fixed costs on top of that is automatically going to put us in a shutdown position and we shouldn't do that. We should leave the industry. Okay. Uh, therefore, what that leads us to is a situation where we will always deal in, we will always be in a place of zero economic profit because profits aren't lasting. So we will have no profiting situation. And also because losses will not be tolerated, we will have no operating at a loss. And we also will have no shutdown. Well, we're not going to tolerate, we're, gonna, we're not going to endure in the shutdown situation, which basically just leaves the zero economic profit. So in the long run, we will always break even. And the last thing I want to review is I want to remind you what we just said is that in the long run, one of the things that defines the long run is the fact that there are no fixed costs and therefore average total cost is equal to average variable cost. And one of the things that we said in a previous lesson is because average total cost is equal to average variable cost, uh, we only have an average total cost curve. We only have an ATC curve. So we've already seen how in perfect competition that marginal revenue is equal to the demand curve. Those are the same curve. So we went from five curves down to four curves in when we went to perfect competition. Well, now we're going from four curves down to three curves because the average total cost curve is the same as the average variable cost curve. And so now all we're going to have is our horizontal demand curve with marginal revenue our marginal cost curve and our average total cost curve. And we're now going to move over to that. We're going to look graphically why, what happens when a firm is profiting or losing in the long run. All right. So what we're seeing here in the top, in this top graph is this is the firm structure graph. And as, like I said, there's only three curves. The demand and the marginal revenue curve in perfect competition have merged into a single horizontal curve. And now that it's the long run, average total cost is equal to average variable cost because there are no fixed costs in the long run. Here's our marginal cost curve. And you can see that where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue, you can see that average total cost is equal to price. Therefore, this is the long run graph of a perfect competitor. We have a situation where we have zero economic profit, always in the long run. Down here, we have the industry graph with a supply curve and a demand curve. And we already explained in a previous segment that where supply and demand intersect in the industry for all of the competitors, that determines the market price, which then becomes the price, uh, the horizontal price line 
that is in the firm graph. That's why I made this one purple and this one purple. They are the same curve, okay? And so now what we're going to do is I'm going to change this up. I'm going to change this to a situation where the firm is profiting and I'm going to show you why profits do not last in the long run. All right, now let me just remind you of just a couple things before we start. In perfect competition, remember, information is perfect. If someone is profiting, everyone else in, in the industry knows that they are profiting. Also, barriers to entry and exit, there are none. Any firm can enter the market and any firm can leave the market if they want to because there are no barriers to entry and no barriers to exit. And because we are in the long run, firms can enter the market and exit the market. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to say is how does the entry of new competitors affect the market? Well, new competitors are going to affect this industry market here. When firms enter the market, so I'm going to say here, firms in green, firms enter. When firms enter, that's going to result in an increase in supply. What that means is there are more suppliers. There were 500 suppliers. Now there are 550 suppliers. Because there are more suppliers, that means supply itself has increased and we will have a rightward shift of the supply curve in the market. So we'll have S prime. Now, how does that increase in supply affect the price in the market? Well, you can see here that it's clearly resulting in a, whoops, that's not horizontal, in a decrease in price. And therefore, when firms enter the market, we will have an increase in supply and we will also have a decrease in the price. Okay? So I need you to remember that. Increase in supply means a decrease in price. And that ha that's when firms enter the market. On the other hand, what happens if firms exit the market? Okay, well, firms exiting the market means that there's less supply. So when firms exit the market, that's going to mean a decrease in supply. And so that is going to mean we had 500 firms, now we have 450 firms. There are now fewer businesses producing that product. So that is going to be a leftward shift of the supply curve, S double prime, and look what happened to the price. So when firms exit and we have less supply, look what happens to the price. There is an increase in the price, and therefore a decrease in supply will result in an increase in the price of that product, okay? An increase in the price in the industry is going to mean an increase in the price for each individual firm. Their demand curve will go up, whereas when there's an increase in supply, that's a decrease in price. And we just learned in the previous segment that when there's a decrease in price, that means that the price line, this demand curve, is going to go down and a company that's profiting is going to move over to breaking even. And that's relevant. We're going to see that happen right now. Okay. All right. So now that we understand what's going to happen if firms enter or exit the market, let's go ahead and redraw our, our industry graph here. All right. We've got our price and our quantity. We've got our supply curve. We've got our demand curve. And we've got our horizontal price line. There we go, which is the demand curve in for the, each of the individual firms. All right, so here's what's going to happen. When the firm is profiting, here's a situation where a firm is profiting. Here's our profit maximizing quantity, right? Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So Q profit max, okay? And so this is our total revenue rectangle. Price times quantity is going to be our total revenue, but here's total cost. Average or average total cost is down here, and therefore ATC, when we multiply average total cost by quantity, we'll get total cost. So we have 
Uh, total revenue is the larger rectangle, total cost is the smaller rectangle, and so because price is greater than average total cost, this firm has profit. But now that it's the long run, in the long run, now because it's perfect competition, everybody knows perfect information. Everybody knows that there's profit to be made. So there are businesses out there that are not in this industry, but they're hearing that there's profit available and they say, hey, we should go into that industry and we should become a, a, a producer and a seller and we should earn some of that profit. And so what this is going to do is this, is when firms are profiting, when perfect competitors are profiting, okay, profit in a perfectly competitive market will draw entrants, they're called entrants. And that means that more firms are going to come and enter the market. That is going to lead to an increase in supply. So up arrow supply, which is going to be a rightward shift of the supply curve, S prime, leading to a decrease in the price, P prime. And so what will then happen is this price line right here, the price will then decrease to the new price line, which is here. That'll be D prime, which is also marginal revenue prime. It's also P prime. It's the new price line. And now you can see what's happened, that marginal revenue and demand are now equal to average total cost. And now that price is equal to average total cost, we are at break even, which means no economic profit. And that's what happens when there are firms in the long run profiting. I said profits do not last. And the reason profits do not last is because profits draw in entrance, which increase supply, lower the price, and then everybody in the market goes back to break even with no economic profit. Now let's see what happens if there is a firm uh, experiencing a loss in the long run. All right, so now we have a situation where our perfect competitor in the long run, because we only have an average total cost curve, perfect competitor because the demand and marginal revenue curve are horizontal, and this firm is experiencing a loss in the long run. Let's see why. Let's see how this is, how this is uh, a loss. Well, we're looking for the profit maximizing quantity, which is where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue, and that's right here. So we're gonna bring that down, and that's gonna be our quantity, PM, profit maximizing quantity. This rectangle right here is the, is the total revenue rectangle because we have the price vertical times the quantity horizontal. So here's our total revenue. But our problem is, is that this goes, now has to be extended all the way up to the average total cost curve. And as we get up to the average total cost curve, we're gonna come over from there and we can see ATC, we can see that average total cost is greater than price. And that means that this company is either operating at a loss or they are in shutdown mode. But remember, the difference between operating at a loss and shutdown is, is whether you're recovering fixed costs or not. Well, there are no fixed costs to recover. So it's all variable costs that we're losing. So this firm definitely needs to shut down. There is no operating at a loss in the long run. There is only shutting down. And so, because this, that's variable cost that this, that this company is losing, their total cost is greater than their total revenue, and therefore this firm is going to exit the market. They're going to shut down and exit the market. They're not going to shut down temporarily and wait for things to change. They are shutting down permanently. They are leaving the entire market. Why? Because they're in the long run and they're not going to sustain these losses and they're not going to stay someplace where they can't be profitable, okay? And therefore, or at least earn zero economic profit. And therefore, when a firm is in this circumstance, 
In fact, there will probably be a few firms that are in this situation where they are losing money and therefore um, uh, firms losing, whoops, firms that are losing money will exit. Because there are low barriers to entry and exit, they can very easily exit. They just shut down. They don't have any long-term contracts. They can leave, you know, if they have a storefront, they don't have a lease on it, they're done. It's expired and they can just walk away. So firms losing money will exit. Well, when those firms exit the market, that means that we will have a decrease in supply, right? A decrease in supply will mean that uh, that the supply curve is going to shift to the left and therefore S double prime, the supply curve will shift to the left in the overall industry and now we're going to have a new price, we'll have a price increase, you can see that the price is going up and because the price is going up there are going to be some firms who were not losing as much, it wasn't as bad for them and what's now going to happen is their price for their operation will increase because because of the new price they're price takers but the market price has gone up and now the new demand curve the new marginal revenue curve the new price is now equal to average total cost their quantity their profit maximizing quantity will increase a little bit there their price will increase their cost structure is staying the same and now their price is equal to average total cost and they are now breaking even and so what happens when some of the firms are operating at a loss some of them will leave the industry decreasing supply increasing the price and then bringing the remaining uh, uh, companies the remaining perfect competitors into a place where they are breaking even. Now, if when that happens, there are some of them that suddenly become profitable, then there will be other firms that will enter the market because of perfect information and low barriers to entry, and this, this will eventually settle down eventually to where all we have left are a whole bunch of uh, competitors that are all breaking even in the long run.